Hi guys, we're back with another video on how to render your elevations or sections. So I will be showing you a workflow from SketchUp to AutoCAD to Illustrator to Photoshop. And don't be startled on the thought of using so many softwares to render a drawing. So each software has its own unique feature that allows you to produce the best output of your creativity. I'll be sharing really simple and quick techniques to pump up your boring cat drawings. So even if you're a beginner in any of these softwares, you'll be able to follow up surely. So let's dive right in. First is we start with SketchUp and this is the model that I'm using today. And so what do you do is first, uh, either for a section or an elevation, whatever it is, the first thing that we do is uh, after you're done with the model, we switch on the panel projection option. So now it's in perspective. So if you want to get a proper elevation or a proper section, you always switch on the panel projection mode. So after which you have to set the scene. So I'm just going to set the scene here and if suppose this is my elevation which i want to use so what do you do is after you set the scene you can either add scene you can do that or you can just directly you can use these options also in standard views either the uh, front or the top or the back left right any any mode you can use that also it's very simple or you can go to animation and add scene so your scene will be just stored so even if you are like wandering around your model here and there you can just click on that and it will still come back to that so we can do that and that's just a quick tip so now what we do is we go to file and we go to export 2d graphic so 2d graphic we export this particular elevation as an autocad elevation so what we can do is either you draft the elevation of the section in AutoCAD or if you have done a 3D model so just get the elevation and section out of it so just simple just so I'm going to rename it as elevation and go to options so whatever release of AutoCAD version you want to use scale you just maintain the same thing export none uh, because if you export polylines with width you're going to get really thick lines separate on a layer so you get separate layers so the section lines the elevation lines will be separate so extension lines all off so just follow these uh, simple um, settings and just click ok and export the issue is that your section or elevation will be a little messy so you will have to clean it up once it comes out of sketchup so this is done Open it. Yeah, so you see that this is pretty messy. So you'll have to clean up all the extra lines and other things. And uh, this is just one method which you can use if you are short on time or else you'll have to draft the section or elevation by yourself. So you can do either ways, this is just something I showed. So we've done this and we've cleaned up the elevation. And the one thing which I do uh, in my drawings either in plans or elevations or section is to maintain a sort of line weight and a sort of line color for each line type so you can see I use a lot of layers like basic ones so I have these basic layers and each layer has its own line weight so that's something which I set in the beginning and uh, here you have the list of line types and line weights that I use with different line colors so if you want me to add these AutoCAD files uh, these reference line weights and uh, line types please do let me know in the comment section I'll add it for you and another thing which I use is these icons so these sort of icons are used to represent them in my plan so this is just like a, a, a way to show your spaces uh, much better so something like this so I use that also so if you want me to add these please let me know in the comment section I'll do that for you here you can see all my sections we have cleaned it up and it's really neat 
and so for today we we're going to be using this particular elevation and can add these sort of details like these trees so these are all downloaded ones trees the humans this just adds a little more extra detail to your elevation and makes it look really good and actually having a color scheme for your work makes uh, your cad elevations and sections itself look quite interesting and then what you do is you will have to export this as a pdf so you go to plot plot the continue and you go to previous plot or if you want just throw in these settings so it's dwg to dwg to pdf and uh, a3 and then what to plot is uh, if you're choosing window you just have to choose the extends and landscape and if you want a particular scale you specify that plot transparency privacy styles background object language you change uh, tv to and as displayed so you these are just basic settings that you use and i have my own ctb which i use for this particular line weight set so if you want me to show you or send you this you have to text me in the comment section so i can give you this particular set of line types and line weights as well as ctbs so this really works good for all my drawings and i really don't have to worry about the line weights of how it's getting plotted so you just click ok and the the elevation which i saved and here you can see that uh, you love to zoom in to actually see so i think it's pretty fine but still i actually do some sort of editing before i render the elevation or section so that's the reason why i use illustrator to edit some line types after they are plotted if i'm not happy with the line types or line colors or some things i want to reduce the opacity or whatever or to add some other details i use illustrator so if you want you can totally skip the step and edit your sections completely in cad itself and bring it directly to photoshop this is the drawing which uh, so you just have to drag and drop it it's simple guys just drag it and just like this and drop it into illustrator and you will get this and uh, so you can see that uh, one way in which i sort of edit my line types is since i followed a particular layers for all my lines it's very easy for me to select the line so what do i do is if suppose i want to reduce the opacity of this hatch i just go i just click one and then go to select same stroke weight or stroke color or whatever however you have specified it if i select stroke weight all the lines in this particular line type or the same stroke weight get selected so this can be for layers if you have separated them in layers or according to stroke weight however you want it so basically you just select it and then you can just go and, sh and change it like that like it makes it really easy to edit the opacity or if you want to edit the points you can do so here so that's also simple and if you want to edit the color that's also possible so after i bring it here i sort of get an idea of how the line weights and the light types work and uh, so i accordingly change it another thing what i do is i color my people so since uh, we have used this so since we have used this as polylines it's very easy you can just select them and uh, you can just give solid fill to them yeah so here you can see if i'm clicking on that since my cad had these uh, people as polylines so in illustrator when you bring it it automatically gets selected as polyline so here you can see this is like an entire polyline so it's actually better to draft in polylines like see these ones will not get selected as a rectangle if you don't draft it as a polyline whereas these ones will so if you want things to get selected just like that even in illustrator you will have to uh, draft it like that so here you can just click on it and you can i just give solid fill and some sort of stroke color that's it so that's how i do that and uh, 
the next thing is I, I think I've reduced the opacity of my trees so you can do that too or just leave it as it is what do I do is I sort of have certain I like to fill some things with salt color just to give an extra uh, layer to it you can just like go here and click ok look at so so but the thing is I wanted it for a sp particular region and not the whole thing so I had to actually draw this shape, this sort of shape here to actually fill this particular region alone. So uh, you could also do this in Photoshop. Actually in Photoshop it will be much easier to just select this region with the magic wand tool rather than sitting and drawing it like this. So but I'm just going to tell you a quick tip. So if you want to draw something curvy like this, so you just use the curve to pen tool and you should lock your layers so that it doesn't overlap you create a new layer and you just draw over it like that Have a look. and after you draw over it you can edit this like this So you can edit this like this and then if you can just bring down your layer I think that will go back and you'll just see the solid color will be visible so that's how I had colored these but there are alternate ways to do this so if you don't want to do it this way it's totally fine so you can do it in Photoshop as well if you want to do it for other shapes which are not curvy which are more like this so you just use the normal pen tool so the next step is to add the textures so i have uh, a lot of textures which i download and keep so here you can see this is this is another texture light texture i've reduced the opacity to 15 percent and this is another texture yeah so these are the two textures which i've used which i have done nothing to them i've just dragged them I think it's this one and this one that I've used. I've just dragged them and dropped them into Illustrator and used it. Okay. So that's how I've done it and just reduce the opacity and just lay it. That's all. Just overlay it upon each other and it gives you that sort of an effect. Okay. And this is also a this is a solid fill. This is a texture. Again, I think it's this texture that I've used. If you guys want me to uh, add these textures, please let me know in the comments box so that I can add them for you. You can also use them in your drawings or you can just download them. So I have just added these textures over these columns and the walls. It's all a fill the other regions and that's it. And you just click save. And then the next step which we will be doing is taking it in the Photoshop. You use this option called File, Place Link, and you select your Illustrator file and click Place. So what happens is your Illustrator file comes up like this, and this is an actually an uh, embedded file. So if you make any changes in Illustrator here, it will automatically get updated in Photoshop. So you make a change in Illustrator and click Ctrl S and once it's saved it's automatically updated in Photoshop. So that's the advantage of using the file place link option. It gives you uh, more uh, freedom over uh, editing your drawing. So what you do is you bring it to Photoshop and then it's just simple guys. So I have these vaults filled. So this could be filled in Illustrator or Photoshop, however you want it. So the issue with mine was that, uh, see, I use the magic wand. If you want to select a region like this, it's very easy. You can just click and the whole thing gets selected. But I had a shape like this, like this really curvy vault and this had many lines in it. So this would get selected like this. So, and even if I increase the tolerance, it wouldn't help. So I had to actually draw over the shape and uh, do it. So that's just for my section. 
so i have used the colorful option i just drew it over i used the uh pen tool so like you just use the pen tool and draw over the shape like oh like that like that like that like that, like that. and like that and then you just go here solid color and you just give a color then you go to pattern and just select some pattern and click alt hold alt and you get this arrow just click on that and it gets embedded so and then i will just reduce your opacity of the fill so as simple as that so that's how i've done these walls so you can do them if you have any complicated shapes which don't get selected by a magic wand and you'll have to actually have to draw over them like i have so i'm just going to switch on these layers so these are just the walls so next is these regions so these regions were pretty easy you just have to like sorry go to magic wand and click on the illustrator file click on this region and get selected and then just repeat go to pattern just choose anything like that click okay you can also scale them so you can click on the pattern yeah you can scale them yeah you can do that you can yeah just move it around like that okay and you alter the opacity so you can do that so i have added a pattern for them yeah so i have added a this sort of textury thing for them so you can do that too so another thing which i usually do is once you add your patterns you can also like if suppose have this region or you can take the region okay take this region and you give pattern there are some predefined patterns that they have like something like this or this i think i used this texture here so you must be wondering how i got this color so it's nothing i just have to click this pattern go to solid color okay select something and alt hold it down but use the opacity voila that's it as simple as that so you can do this also for your thing for your uh, drawings is another thing technique i use so these are pretty quick and easy things which i do i really don't like spending much time in rendering or drawing so i just do all these easy methods to you know quick fix my drawings so then is just a matter of adding Uh, more textures for your ground and your sky so for the ground uh, for the sky i have used this one and then i've overlaid it with this one so i i like to overlay two three textures it sort of gives a more uh, better effect so this is in different opacities then you can add the lower image and yeah so that's again this is also a texture that i've used So I've used the color balance option. You can go here and color balance, and I've sort of made this into a greenish tinge. So this is actually like this, and like a concrete texture for which I've added like a greenish tinge. That's it. So then after that, it's your trees, more trees. So these trees I've added in uh, Photoshop. So you go to brushes, yeah, go to the brush tool. So you go to your brushes. So see here, I have a lot of brushes that I use. So you can just take like any of them. If you're holding the caps icon, you'll have to switch it off in order for you to see your brush. So you can just like use anything. I'll just give you a sample. So okay, it's in gray. And be sure to create a new layer. And just hit it. Okay, it's not seen because I think it's in maybe let me use just some dark. Yeah, like that. So like that, you can just add these really quick ones. Okay, so you add your trees and then 
I've added a moon. Yeah, a moon. Very simple. Just go to the shapes icon and you just hold on to a shape. Make sure you have the fill on, the stroke off, and you go to pattern. Just select something and alt. That's it. Simple. So that's how I've created that. So I've just showed to you in a detailed way how I render my sections really quickly. So the time consuming part will be cleaning your sections or elevations once it comes from SketchUp or drafting them. But once you have done that, that's a major job done. But make sure you maintain the correct line weights, line types and uh, line colors and uh, that, that, and use proper CTB for them. That really determines your final output. So once you've done the hard part, uh, Illustrator and Photoshop is extremely easy to edit your sections and your drawings and your elevations. Please make sure to try this and do let me know in the comment section if you like this video. And if you want me to attach any of the files that I've used in this particular video, please do let me know and I will do that for you. Until next time, thanks a lot for tuning in guys. Bye.